Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Welcome to the boost. Hope everyone's having a great day, great morning, afternoon, whenever you're hearing this. We went to a place yesterday that I hope was was not too confusing. If you really think about it, you'll see it everywhere. That most of what we look for in life is not inherently meaningful. It was it's it was given meaning by society and we've bought into it. And if you really think through a lot of what society is pushing us to, a lot of what we're doing, a lot of what we're pushing our family to, is to accomplish goals that are not inherently valuable. Now, it's good to do that. There's nothing, you've got to live in the world. And you you got to do what you do. But so much of our meaning, the conversations that we think are taking place behind us, the the goals that I'm looking for, the world around me, a lot of this stuff is just... We've given meaning to neutral circumstances. They don't really, really. They matter because we make them matter. Right? They matter because we attribute consequence to them. So if I have something that I've given value to, it matters. I give value, if I'm in school, to a credit. So now that matters. In its essence, I have we have given value to something. And that's a lot of the frustration that we have. Is that when we give meaning to things, the human's experience of giving meaning to something many times doesn't make that thing inherently valuable. And so after we strive for it, and after we achieve it, it doesn't satisfy us at the at the deepest level. And we started talking about this last week already, about looking for inherent meaning. Is the thing that I'm doing valuable regardless of the meaning that I put on it or that the world puts on it? Is it inherently meaningful? This, by the way, is why I find spirituality so critical in one's life, personally. Because when you do something that you believe comes from from God, that that goes deeper than the surface, you're engaging in an activity that you know society didn't give meaning to you, the divine gave meaning to it. And when the divine gives meaning to something, that thing is inherently meaningful. So personally, even though many times I'm distracted from it, the, the quest for spirituality and for the spirituality in mundane things, right? The quest for parenting in a, from a spiritual perspective. Why do I have children? What, what, what's my goal? What's my, what am I trying to accomplish? Is it to get them independent financially? Right? When you look at things, regardless of your background, you don't have to be uh, a, a spiritual master. You don't have to know the whole Torah. Like, Regardless of your background, clearly the wisdom that you get from spirituality, from the Torah, from places of spiritual authenticity is going to drive you. But even if you don't have the background, even if you don't have the knowledge, just asking the question is massive. What's the spiritual benefit in this thing? What's the deeper meaning in this? Why am I doing this for? You see this in life. When the when the wealthy guy who lives his whole his whole life has been buying companies and firing people, and I'm all for buying companies. At the end of his life, starts giving it all away. Why? Because he's looking, his soul is searching for meaning in his activities. When we look around in our lives at the things that we do every day and we ask ourselves, what is the inherent meaning in the activity? What is it doing for me? What's the, forget the goal. What's, what am I doing? Why am I doing it for? What is it bringing into this world that is beneficial, that it, it, but for me it wouldn't have come in? What am I adding? Just ask that question. I work in a job. Why? Why am I doing this for? Am I supporting somebody which is meaningful because I want to give this person a life? 
Am I feeding some behavior that may not be meaningful, but I can't break out of it? Am I just bored and I never really thought about it and I ended up here at a college or high school? Do I not even know? I have enough money to live. Things are fine, but I don't know. I just do it. Why do I do what I do? Is there meaning behind the meaning that I've given it? Because getting the job done is important to my boss, but he's given that meaning. We had this a lot when we were in when we were in law. This was like a big moment for us, you know. And, and when you're whenever you work in big law, a lot of what you do is you're servicing clients. So you don't really, really care about your clients, at least not when you're young. Like you don't really, really care that like, you know, Blackstone is buying a hotel. You know, or a hundred of them. Like you don't really, really care. Like you care and it's cool to work on a Blackstone deal, but like you're not like, oh my gosh, like I hope Blackstone buys, you know, Hilton. So when you're working on a deal and it starts to, to register to you that you're gonna have to work, you know, twenty hour days for the next two months. Every day has so much meaning. You got to get through so much stuff. You got to accomplish so much on your list because the Blackstone has said they have to close in two months. And it's the biggest deal of the year. And everyone's telling you it's the biggest deal of the year. And all the partners are saying it's amazing. And the work you're doing and you're so scared that if you do this and you miss something in a year from now, Steve Schwartzman is going to make a mistake and you look at the document and it's going to be because you forgot to check the covenant that says that if he does X, the thing blows up. And you're going crazy and there's so much meaning. And then you wake up one morning and there's two words on your email and for the lawyers that are listening you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about it says the two words is code for it's over it's pencils down because lawyers use pencils pencils down means deals on hold that's it you're working like crazy all night all night all night all night you're going you're going you're going you're going every day every second you're planning your calendar you're working on documents you got this one through you're negotiating you're getting all the papers and getting everything set up the closing room is coming up and then all of a sudden pencils down Pencils down. Pencils down means deals on hold. That's what it means. Second that happens, everything stops. Everything stops. And then there's the rumor mill, and you find out that whatever. KKR bought it. And now everything you did, everything you did has no meaning. Right? So who cares about the contract? No one's using it. Deal's done. Deal's over. So the work only had meaning while the deal was on. What happened to all my work? What happened to all those hours? They're gone. Just like that. They're gone. Poof. A week of my life. A month of my life. Paper's worth nothing. Just paper. We take it and we throw it out. We we'll go home. Introduce your, reintroduce yourself to your family. So if I have nothing else that drives the meaning to what I do every day, and that happens, what have I done for the past month? It's been meaningless. you know what it felt like? I remember, I'll never forget talking to people during the Madoff the whole thing. We knew people, because I knew people that were affected by it. I knew people that knew people that were affected by it even more. You know what it's like to spend your whole life building assets? How many sacrifices you make? How many parties you miss? How many kids' lives you've missed? to grow an asset class, to grow an asset that you have, and then get to a place you can finally reap the benefits of it. And now you have a, you've made $10 million, and now you're, you're living off the fund that's gonna pay you the returns, and you're ready to start to enjoy, and one day you wake up, and you get a call that Bernie Madoff, or you look at the Wall Street Journal, 
and every bit of your work, poof, gone. What was all those years worth? If the goal was only making money, now you lost all your money. So what'd you get? What'd you get? You built an asset, and then you lost the asset. So what's it worth? It was meaningful, because society said wealth is meaningful, but now it's gone. So you got nothing. Was all that meaningless? Was all your hard work meaningless? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe why, Maybe that's why in these big firms there's so much angst, anxiety. I don't say depression, but... Maybe. You see, as humans, we hate lack of meaning. We'll talk about this tomorrow. All right, let's talk about this tomorrow. All right, everybody. Look out into your day. It's hard. It's super hard. Are you kidding me? I've had these com- I've had these thoughts. Everyone should, I think. What am I doing throughout my day? Is is it inherently meaningful, or is it just? meaningful to the moment of the people around me and it doesn't really have any inherent meaning I will talk about it All right, everybody have a great day with God's help we can't wait to see you again tomorrow have a great day living on a lifeline the world doesn't ever seem to change looking for the sunshine but you're caught up in the rain it's like your eyes are wide open but you cannot see you're watching life Pass you by like one, two, three Walking in destruction The winds of life blur your vision All the devastation Forever feels like you're on the run It's time No one else can set you free You're locked inside And only you have got the key